Hi, I'm Daniel Wong, and today we're going to be playing a deck that I'm calling Teamer Super Friends Turns. Like any good Super Friends deck, this one is built around a core of very powerful Planeswalkers. We have nine Planeswalker cards here, split between three Ren and Six, two Oko Thief of Crowns, two Chandra Torture Defiance, and two Jace the Mind Sculptor. So where this deck really gets to go crazy is with the extra turns package. With Fires of Invention plus Savor the Moment, you get to take an extra turn, starting as early as turn 4. Fires of Invention lets you cast spells without paying their mana costs, but only up to 2 spells a turn and only spells on your turn. Uh, Savor the Moment is one of the cheapest extra turn spells in Modern at just 3 mana, but you have to skip your untap step of that extra turn. The thing is, when you have a Fires of Invention out, you really don't care that you're skipping the untap step since you're not spending mana on your spells anyway. Then we have Exhaustion as a pseudo extra turn spell and four copies of Time Warp. Where this gets to really go crazy is by casting a whole bunch of Time Warps and Savor the Moments with a Planeswalker out, you get to very quickly ultimate your Planeswalker, and that is usually how you end up winning the game, is with one of these Planeswalker ultimates. To round it all out, we have eight cantrips split between four Arkham's Astrolabe, which is also fixing for Oko, Renin Six, and all of the other red cards, and four Serum Visions. We have a few miscellaneous interactive spells, two Lightning Bolt, two Snapcaster Mage, and one Cryptic Command. Now where this deck gets really interesting is the mana base. We have a whopping 25 lands in the mana base because we're trying to support Mystic Sanctuary as well as a whole bunch of red and greed cards like Ren and Six. So Mystic Sanctuary is a land with the island subtype, that's very important, and it says it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more other islands. When it enters the battlefield untapped, you may put target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. What that means is you get to put your time warps and your savor the moments back on top, keep casting them over and over, keep activating your planeswalkers over and over, as long as you keep playing mystic sanctuaries and putting them on top. Pretty insane. And then because it has the island subtype, that means it's fetchable with the fetch lands, flooded strand, misty rainforest, polluted delta, and scalding tarn, uh, which means Renin Six's plus grabbing a fetch land can also turn into a mystic sanctuary, which can turn into a time warp. Have you ever had a two mana planeswalker that pluses to take an extra turn? Because let me tell you, it is pretty good. To support Mystic Sanctuary, we need to have a lot of islands in the mana base. So we have 20 cards, 9 fetch lands, and 11 actual islands that help do that. Uh, we have the 4 Mystic Sanctuaries, 4 snow covered islands, 1 breeding pool, and 2 steam vents. Uh, for non-island cards, we've got one Snow Mountain, which does mean it's important to maximize Scalding Tarn so that you can fetch the Snow Mountain when you need it, uh, one Mikokro, two Castle Vantress, and one Lonely Sandbar. So Lonely Sandbar is another very interesting card with Ren and Six. It basically turns Ren's plus one into draw a card. Like, sure, you have to spend a mana, but come on. A two mana Planeswalker that pluses to draw a card? That's insane. Uh, the other abilities on Ren and Six are also pretty good. Minus one deals one damage to any target. This is good for Noble Hierarch or uh, Glistener Elf. Basically anything with one toughness. It's a good Ren and Six target. And then the ultimate allows you to basically draw your entire deck if you have a Ren and Six and a Ren and Six on board and a Time Warp in your graveyard. Because then what happens is your instance of sorceries, meaning your time warp, gets retrace, so you can discard a land card and pay its mana cost to cast time warp again. Then with a Renin Six on board, you just plus, grab a land from the graveyard, and put it right back in the graveyard to cast time warp. What ends up happening is you draw your entire deck, and you can kill them in any way you want. Oko can also kill the opponent, given enough turns. Uh, you can alternate between plus twoing to create a food and plus oneing to turn that food into an elk. Then you just keep attacking with your elks, take a couple extra turns, and pretty soon the opponent's dead. Uh, his minus five is also interesting. Uh, you can exchange control to target artifact or creature you control and target creature and opponent controls with power three or less. This is cool for taking things like Urza, uh, but mostly we're using Oko because his plus one is incredibly flexible. Uh, you can do it on things like an opposing Urza, so that instead of having these insane abilities that turn artifacts into mock sapphires, it's just a 3-3. You can do it on things like Engineered Explosives or Chalice of the Void to take away those abilities. Uh, overall, Oko is just incredibly flexible. He can win the game on his own. Uh, he has an insane amount of loyalty, which makes him pretty good against aggro decks, especially when you're creating a food token every turn to gain three life against an aggro deck. That's a big deal for them, and dealing 6 damage to kill Oko 
also pretty difficult. Um, but yeah, great card. Chandra Torture Defiance has two plus ones. She can exile the top card of your library, and you can choose to cast it. If you don't, she deals two damage to each opponent. She can add two red mana. Uh, she minus threes to deal four to a creature, and she minus sevens to create an emblem that basically says you win the game. Technically, that's not what the emblem says, but it's really hard to ultimate Chandra and then proceed to lose the game. Uh, so again, Chandra is pretty easy to ultimate. She comes down on four and pluses to five, so all you need to do is take a few extra turns in a row to ultimate her and then win the game. And finally, we have good old Jace the Mind Sculptor. He plus twos to either scry one or fate seal. He zeros to brainstorm. He minus ones to unsummon. And he minus twelves to basically win the game. Uh, so Jace is basically the most consistent source of card advantage, but it is kind of hard to get him to ultimate because he starts at a lowly three loyalty and working up to 12 is a little bit difficult. Over in the sideboard, we have two pieces of graveyard hate in two surgical extraction, four types of counter spells in one negate, one Mystical Dispute, and two Veil of Summer. Yes, I realize this doesn't say counter target spell on it, but it's pretty much cryptic command against opposing counter magic and thought seizes. Uh, we have a bunch of removal in two Abraid and Anger of the Gods, two Engineered Explosives, and two Stomp. And Bonecrusher Giant is a pretty interesting split card. Uh, Stomp is some kind of removal, and Bonecrusher Giant is some kind of threat. Obviously, neither side is especially good for the mana cost, but the fact that it's a split card I think is what justifies its spot in the sideboard, where in modern, 15 cards is not a lot to have in your sideboard, so having a kind of 17-card sideboard is pretty good. And finally, we have Magus of the Moon. Uh, because I expect opponents to bring in Nature's Claim for Fires of Invention, I prefer Magus of the Moon over Blood Moon in this deck. Uh, it's mostly there for Tron and other decks that aren't likely to have Lightning Bolt anyway, so the fact that it can die to creature removal is a lot less relevant. Really the only relevant one there is Walking Ballista out of Eldrazi Tron, but uh, the upside of not dying to Nature's Claim effects is good enough to justify its inclusion, I think. Another interesting note is that we get to play a lot of banned cards in this deck. Bale of Summer, banned in Standard, suspended in Historic, banned in Pioneer. Arkham's Astrolabe, banned in Popper. Renan 6, banned in Legacy. Oko, banned in Standard, suspended in Historic. Jace, formerly banned in Modern. Uh, Fetchlands, banned in Pioneer. So we're basically playing cards banned in every major competitive format. It's really nice to just take a pile of banned cards, add a few more just to hold it all together, and call it a deck. If you like these videos and would like to support me, you can use the link in the description down below to buy the cards you're missing on TCG Player. Alright, with that, let's jump straight into the matches. Alright, here we are for match number one. We've lost the die roll. Uh, this hand looks a little too slow for being on the draw. Ooh. I mean... Got the fires and the saver, we would need one more land and something to do. Guess we keep this... Probably bottoming the cryptic here. Lightning bolt keeps us alive, and then that starts the combo. So, yeah. What are you up to, opponent? Cinder Glade. This looks like a Titan Shift, probably. So, kind of regretting keeping this lightning bolt around because it's really not going to do anything. Another Cinder Glade. At least they're off to a slow start. Um. I guess I'll just cast the Serum Visions, see where we go. Jace is good, Saver is also pretty good. Let's see, next turn I guess we get to Serum Visions and try to set something else up, so that seems decent. Wood Elves from the opponent. I guess we could bolt that, it's unlikely this bolt is going to really do anything else. I mean, it could, you know, like, we could double bolt a Primeval Titan, but... That seems like not where we want to be. Um, comes Astrolabe, huh? Well, we're going to have fires, so that's not really going to be super important. Misty Rainforest is kind of nice because it turns into Savor the Moment uh, with the Mystic Sanctuary. But I also think we have a lot of lands in the deck, and I think we're just going to bottom both of these. See if we can draw something even better. All right, well, I don't think the opponent can kill us this turn, and we may or may not be able to kill the opponent, but we're set up to at least do cool stuff, so that's that's good. Um, 
right? Mystic Sanctuary is not going to put anything on top. And then we'll go for the Fires into Saver, into Jace into Saver, and hopefully draw something good off of Jace's zero. Although, I guess we could uh, play around a Bolt by plussing Jace first, which I think is probably worth it, given how slow the opponent's hand was. They probably have something. Something Bolt-like. All right, let's take another turn. Interesting time to Summoner's Pact. Through the... What the heck? What the heck? Uh... Wow, okay. I wasn't expecting that at all. And this is going to persist. That sucks, huh? Jeez. Okay. Wow. Wow. Um, so I guess this isn't exactly Titan Shift. This is, I think it is probably Titan Shift, but with Through the Breach, right? So maybe no Scape Shift, but maybe Scape Shift, who knows? Um, Jesus Christ. I guess we need something. So I'm going to put Serum Visions on top and then uh, Snapcaster Serum Visions, and then we'll draw Serum Visions. So we're just going to really set up our next draws. I guess this kind of explains why the opponent wasn't doing anything. They were, okay. They were setting up for the, uh, for the Through the Reach plus Woodfall Primus, I guess. And I guess they could have gone for, uh, or through the breach plus primeval titan given that they had the summoners packed so um hmm. you really want a fires of invention to get going so i think i gotta bottom both of these yeah that's not it yeah there's valakut so that's that's scary um you're going to be dead very soon. Like, maybe right now? Didn't do the math. Let's see, one Valakut. Yeah, not quite dead, literally now, but figuratively dead right now. So, if we draw exactly Fires of Invention off the top, we do have a chance. Uh, because we get to... That's not it. We get to fires and then save in the moment, and the next turn, Jace try to draw something. But oh well, that was a good Woodfall Primus. Okay, what do we have in the sideboard? Um, Magus of the Moon stops Valakut, but is also kind of awkward, which is unfortunate. Negate is pretty good, and Mystical Dispute kind of sucks, but also might just be better than something else that we have let's take a look so lightning bolt's terrible get rid of that i feel like snapcaster doesn't have too much that he's grabbing now that we're getting rid of bolts i mean you could get serum vision save the moment or time warp that's not that many options also cryptic or exhaustion yeah i think i'd rather just have a very bad mana leak right like that the opponent's game plan is so built around resolving a Through the Breach or a uh, Primeval Titan or whatever that I feel like having very bad mana leak is still fine. Um, yeah, this hand needs to draw into something, but we have double cantrip, so. I think I'm going to start with Arkham's Astrolabe, just because then if we draw Renin 6, we'll get to cast it on turn 2. Um... We also get to see what we're drawing with Astrolabe before we decide how we scry with Serum Visions, so that's helpful. All right, opponent's down to six cards. And we draw another land. So now we know that we don't need lands that badly when we're scrying with Serum Visions. Search for Tomorrow Suspended. Another land. Yeah, we really don't need lands. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get a tapped Steam Vents now and then cast the Serum Visions, and this way we won't ruin the Scry. This does kind of suck if we... Yeah, we don't really need or want either of these. Yep, Sakura Tribe Elder. 
Plum's going to have a good chunk of mana next turn. That's at least something. I'm going to hold up our very bad mana leak and then probably cycle Lonely Sandbar. Yeah, opponent can get to 5 mana, which is like kind of spooky. This 5 mana is through the breach mana, so I guess it's a very good thing we're holding up this mana leak. It looks a lot better than Snapcaster Mage right now. Explore, that's fine. Another explore, that is A OK. Opponent with gajillions of mana over there. Down to two cards, and there's another Steve. Um, yeah, let's cycle the Lonely Island. There's a Fires. Yeah, that Fires isn't quite doing anything except bringing us off Mystical Dispute, so unfortunately, I don't really want to do that. We could cast Mystic, or we could play the Mystic Sanctuary to put Serum Visions on top. And then next turn, Fires into Time Warp. And then the following turn, Time Warp and Serum Visions. It's not bad, but I guess we get to delay the putting Serum Visions on top if we want to go down that route. So just go ahead and leave up Mystical Dispute again. Unfortunately, the opponent is almost at enough mana to just pay for Mystical Dispute plus uh, Through the Breach. To get one more land in play, plus the Sakura Tribe Elder. All right, that seems like a good target. So the unfortunate part about just casting fires right now is we don't really have anything going for us. We need some kind of uh, source of card advantage. Um, because otherwise our time warps just cycle, which is not very strong. Uh, but the fact that we get this opportunity, I'm going to go for it. So put the Serum Visions on top to try to help us find something. Let's go Fires into Time Warp. And I'm probably not going to play this Magus just yet uh, because we're going to want this Flooded Strand to turn into a Mystic Sanctuary. And then uh, once we Brick, then we'll want to play it so that the opponent's Valakuts and Field of the Dead don't do anything. But yeah, basically, we'd really like to draw something good with this Serum Visions. <laughs> no. Goodness gracious. Um, wow. Well, we can get double Magus. The opponent still has their Forest, which is annoying. We could just cycle this Time Warp, try to draw something. I think probably we put Serum Visions on top in Time Warp, and then get one more shot at Serum Visions thing. That's really not where you want to be with Mystic Sanctuary, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Alright, Serum Visions, draw us something good. No. That doesn't quite count. Time Warp isn't too bad, but... Given that we have Castle Vantress, we probably just want to try to scry into something better. Uh, something like, you know, a Planeswalker or Source of Card Advantage. So I'm going to put these both at the bottom and then use the castle and then cast Magus. All right, Sources of Card Advantage. That's great. Okay, and let's see where we go from here. And now, even if Fires of Invention gets destroyed, we would get to cast Chandra off of our two red sources and then use Astrolabe and cast our Oko under it. So, or I guess probably we would cast Magus to try to insulate ourselves from... Oh boy. What are you pacting for? Primeval Titan. Makes sense. All right, well, as long as our Magus is alive, these mountains aren't that scary, but... As soon as it's... Uh, oh, right. Let's also cast Oko. So what if your primeval titan was a primeval elk? Cool. Interesting. Hard cast Simeon Spirit Guide. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? Do they have a... Way to deal one damage to Magus? That doesn't seem right. I don't think they do. 
They're probably just going to sack this. No? Oh, okay. They're just done. All right, do we want to change anything for the draw? Um, bad mana leak looks extra bad on the draw, but again, it's one of our best ways to interact with the opponent, so I think we got to keep it in. Yeah, let's just try it like that. All right, here we are for game three. We are on the draw. Um, shoot. This is a tough one. So Renin 6 makes this hand pretty appealing, but uh, we also don't actually have a way to cast Magus while, while having a basic island in play. I think I'm going to keep it anyway. Uh, this one's a little rougher than we'd like, but we'll see if we can get there. All right, this looks like probably a suspended search for tomorrow. Yep, and the opponent very intelligently has gotten a basic. Uh, geez. I have a lot of mana requirements here. I think I'm going to get Steam Vents here. Just because we have so many red cards in hand. Oh my god. Yeah, these cards don't help, like, at all. They're not basics, and they're not green sources. Well, that's unfortunate. All right, there's a Valakut from the opponent, and another suspended search for tomorrow. Okay, well, there's a basic at least. Um, I'm afraid that this Mystic Sanctuary probably won't do anything, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and play it now. And then we get to next turn Magus, and then following turn Fires plus something else. All right, one search for tomorrow coming off suspend, so the opponent's going to have four lands in play. They could theoretically spirit guide and even get a uh, even get a primeval titan into play this turn, which would be pretty terrible. I'm probably going to lose if that happens. All right, there's a Valakut. That is pretty scary, but resolving this Magus I think makes it a lot less scary. All right. Opponent's got a lot of mountains, but they are going to have two forests if they want. So that is kind of annoying. Uh, but we could, you know, after a prime time, do something like fires into Oko and elk the prime time. So, oh god, is this another case of they have the woodfall primus? Because that would be just awful. I mean, there's just not too much we can do about that, though. So I guess one option is to Serum Visions off of our Snow Basic and then just play another Magus. Which I guess is good if they're trying to kill this Magus. Yeah, I think we go for that. We try to set up and try to put some Savor the Moments on top. I'm also not going to attack with this Magus because I'm afraid of our opponent uh, just through the Breaching something. Um, that's not it. These lands are turned off, so we don't actually want them. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to cast this Magus and pass the turn without attacking. These cards in our hand are looking pretty uncastable without fires. So, <laughs> okay. Our opponent's in hard casting in Spirit Guide territory, so I guess that's a good sign for us. Uh, there we go, now we're talking. Uh, so we can Fires of Invention and then Savor the Moment, and then next turn cast two Planeswalkers. Although, oh yeah, the opponent is off through the Breach mana unless their last three cards are exactly Spirit Guide through the Breach and something that we don't like. So I'm just going to go for it because I feel like that's fairly unlikely for that exact combo of cards. I think they would have just gone for something earlier, like killing two of our lands. And I think I just want to keep our Maguses alive. I don't really think I want to do anything about that seeming spirit guide. Um, Alright, so I guess we'll just ask some stuff. Alright, and again, I don't want the Maguses to die, so I'm not going to attack. Uh, we will be able to elk this food next turn, and then hopefully go from there hardcast search for tomorrow all right it's looking 
Looking good for us, if that's what the opponent's up to. Okay, okay, now we're talking. Uh, so unfortunately, this can't be a Mystic Sanctuary because of our Megases, but that's fine. Uh, so let's Elk the food. Plus Ren. Take an extra turn. Nice. I'll see you for the next match. Okay, here we are for match two. We've won the die roll. Uh, yeah, this hand's not too bad. We we basically need something to uh, something to actually do on our extra turns. But you know, lightning bolt keeps us alive. Cryptic command can also keep us alive. We really just want to draw a planeswalker. Cavern of Souls naming human. And Aether Vial. Bummer. That's not boltable. Alright, guess we're getting a uh, tapped Steam Vents here. Alright, Snapcaster is good. That allows us to snap bolt later. Okay, Aether Vial to one. And what are you up to now? Ziggurat into Thalia. That's annoying. Um, I could bolt it off of a basic, but I kind of want to get a uh, a breeding pool, and I kind of want to not take damage. So I think I'm just going to bolt it on our turn. Or actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait and bolt it on their turn, I guess. But yeah, basically, I want to get a green source. Actually, if we draw Astrolabe, we do need to have a Snow Island. All right, yeah, I'll bolt it now, and then we have Snap bolt up, and we can cast Astrolabe if we need to. Three color man is hard. I guess one thing I could have done is I could have gotten a breeding pool and then and then gotten a snow mountain, but oh well. Um, but now I think I'm gonna serum visions since we don't have our next land set up. Oh, so, yeah. I guess if I draw astrolabe, we'll want to cast that. If we draw bolt, we'll want to cast that. So serum visions off of castle it looks like. All right, uh, there are some uncastable Planeswalkers, unfortunately. We do want a Jace, but we need lands. That's so rough. That's so rough. Yeah, I think we need to bottom both of these. Brutal. It's really not the kind of thing you like to see. But yeah, we, we really need to get this Cryptic and this Fires online. All right, opponent's got... Ooh, Sunbaked Canyon. I didn't know... It that uh i didn't know that humans played that all right two drop is meddling mage probably naming lightning bolt so that's annoying but we didn't have any targets anyway so snapcaster mage they didn't know about this did they hmm thalia's lieutenant uh let's bolt this now um so one thing that I kind of want to do is just snap bolt this now, and the reason is if we wait and the opponent has a vial on two, they can, in response to our snapcaster trigger, name lightning bolt with a meddling mage, and that would be pretty bad for us. So yeah, let's just go for that now. Also with that cavern, uh, having cryptic online isn't super relevant for countering at least. Um, yeah, I do like killing the opponent's stuff. That that sounds like a good plan to me. And then I kind of want to shuffle, get that Jason, that Oko back in drawable territory. All right, what is it now? Drawing with the Sunbaked Canyon up to four cards in hand. Luckily, no board other than the Aether Vial, but... Yeah, Mantis Rider. Charming Prince, huh. Interesting. Haven't seen this one. In humans, at least. Definitely seen it in Eldraine Draft. Scry 2, okay. So, uh, notably, Castle Vantress is not an island, so um, Mystic Sanctuary is not online here. So, otherwise, I would definitely think about putting Bolt on top, and actually, I probably would do that, but that is not an option available to us right now. Uh, I guess we have Cryptic now. Opponent only has two cards in hand, so that's not too bad. What did they do with that scry? Two to the bottom? They love to see that. Aether Vial, I'm sure, is staying on three. 
filing in another Mantis Rider. Um, kind of just want to tap draw, honestly, just save ourselves eight life or whatever this is. Because, again, the opponent has Cavern of Souls. We're not going to counter anything with this, so. Might as well just use it as a Fog plus draw card. All right, so now this lets us get somewhere if we um if we start time warping uh because now we're attacking with snapcaster and we have the exhaustion and we're going to be drawing a card every turn the unfortunate part is the opponent is going to be drawing cards every turn but we'll just try not to fizzle i guess so basically we really want one of our next two draws to be a good planeswalker Not quite. Um, Mystic Sanctuary is not too bad, though. We get to get the Time Warp back and then draw it with Mikokoro, so that's pretty cool. Um, is that what we want to do? Because we could just scry with Castle Vantress and then put Time Warp on top. I feel like drawing cards is better. Well, actually, maybe we just draw a card before we draw the Time Warp in case we draw a Planeswalker. That's actually even better, better. So... Yeah, let's do that, see what we draw. Okay, well, we've got stuff and we've got things, so that's good. It's also very fortunate that the opponent's Aether Vial is tapped. Um, it will untap through this exhaustion, but at least it's not going to do anything right now, right now. All right, so let's see what we draw. It's not quite it. Yeah, let's do that. And go ahead and put Time Warp on top. The other good thing is we do get to get in with the Snapcaster Mage, so at least we're making some progress on that front. And once we play the Snow Mountain, we'll have a Scry available off of Castle Vantress and then also Mikokoro, so that's pretty cool. So I guess let's Scry and then draw. Uh, well, Scalding Tarn puts Time Warp on top, I guess. We did play a land this turn, though, so we're, it's going to have to be uh, play the Scalding Tarn, get Mystic Sanctuary, and then that whole jazz. I don't really like it, but I'm going to put it on top. Notably, the opponent has many cards in hand because of the all the times we're activating Mikokoro, so we really don't want to fizzle here. Okay, Renin 6. Uh, that's pretty good. So now I think we get to... Oh, we did use up a lot of Mystic Sanctuaries, though, which is annoying. Well, we get to Renin 6, a land back. Uh, Fetra Mystic Sanctuary, draw Time Warp, cast Time Warp, and then I think we still get Castle Vantress, so that's cool. This, by the way, is why having uh, four Mystic Sanctuaries, I think, is really good. You, you really want to just have as many fetchable Sanctuaries as possible. I feel like this is one of those cards where if you could play more than four of it, you would in this deck. Yeah, there's no point in scrying before drawing this time warp that we know we're going to draw. Now, we probably want to actually just upkeep scry, which, now that I'm thinking about it, is something that we might have wanted to start doing earlier, but... Uh, oh well. Let's see. Fire is bad. Time warp good. Uh, I don't think we want to upkeep Scry right now. So let's do the time warp again. Get a land back. Let's do the time warp again again. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we want to see if we can draw a Planeswalker first. So let's scry here. And then if we want to draw a Planeswalker, um, Chandra's pretty nice. So we already did the time warp once, so we get to put Castle Vantress to the bottom, Chandra to the top, and then activate Mikokoro. Draw Chandra, time warp to the top, and then we'll want to cast this and plus for mana since we don't want to exile that time warp we we can't cast any more spells this turn because of fires so 
Okay, so we're going to draw a um, time warp so we don't need to scry. Now let's scry and see if we can set up something with Chandra's Plus or the opponent's going to concede the game. Nice. Okay, humans. Uh, this sounds like a removal matchup. So we've got Engineered Explosives, Bone Crusher, Abrade, Anger of the Gods. This all seems great. And this seems like uh, less of a trying to combo off, so we'll take out three fires and all of the savers. All right, try it like that. Here we are for game two. We are on the draw. Um, I feel like against a slow deck, this, this hand is very good, but against humans, doesn't seem great. There's no removal here. We might not survive until Jace, and even if we do, Jace is almost certainly going to die to uh, the opponent's board, so let's not keep that. Rough. <laughs> rough, rough, rough. If this was a uh, an astrolabe, I would consider keeping it, but it's not a good five. Okay. All right, this one's keepable. Uh, it's, you know, it's a five. It's not going to be good, but it's keepable. So let's put our most castable spells, or sorry, least castable spells to the bottom. Most castable spells in hand. All right, Noble Hierarch. It's a little annoying. Um, let's see, now that we have Scalding Tarn, uh, we can fetch a basic uh, a basic mountain with it to cast a braid on turn two. So I think I'm going to fetch a basic island here to Serum Visions. And yes, it puts us off Oko or um, potentially Renin 6 if we draw it. But I think I just want to conserve my life right now. All right, these are good. These are good. Um, I think I don't really want Astrolabe right now in case the opponent casts Thalia or something where it uh, really taxes our mana. So let's do that. Okay, Unclaimed Territory into Kite Sail Freebooter. Bummer. Probably take an Oko, given that we have two Abrades. Well, the opponent only has three cards in hand, so that is good news for us. Yep. So I guess abrading that Kite Sail Freebooter is going to be kind of free now. Meaning, you know, it unlocks the other abraid, so. All right, here's our lightning bolt that we put on top, and I'm just going to wait. The opponent doesn't have any uh, Aether Vial right now, so they can't do any shenanigans like putting a Thalia's Lieutenant into play or uh, putting a Meddling Mage into play in response to us cracking the Scalding Tarn. So we don't need to really worry about that. Meddling Mage is certainly going to name a Braid, so let's uh, kill the Freebooter before that. Alright, opponent only has two cards in hand, so that's a good sign for us. Charming Prince. Only one card in hand. Let's see, and they scried two to the bottom. Well, that's a good sign. Um, so one option is to just hurt ourselves and cast Oko and see if the opponent can kill it. But another option is to shock ourselves on the steam vents so that we have both a braid and lightning bolt. Well, we would have to first lightning bolt the meddling mage to unlock a braid. Um, but then we get a braid, which I think is better because then Oko is more likely to live. The unfortunate part, obviously, is then we're taking more damage. But if we're playing an Oko, then we can eat food if we need to. So I think this is the way to go. Then just in response to whatever they're doing, we'll be bolting stuff. I guess they do have two cards in hand and probably up to three if they crack their horizon canopy, but it is what it is. Champion of the Parish. Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, that is also annoying. So we're definitely bolting the meddling mage. Now the question is, do we bolt the Mantis Rider or the Champion of the Parish? And I feel like, given that the opponent's out of cards in hand, even though they can draw one off the Horizon Canopy, I think we just killed the Mantis Rider. Our Elks will eventually be able to block stuff, so... So it turns out, uh, shocking ourselves on that Steam Vents actually saved us life, because we got to kill a thing. <clears throat> so that's cool. Okay, Arkham's Astrolabe lets us save life and then also elk it if we want to, which... Well, I guess if we elk it, that means we're taking some damage. Um, basically, we would need to 
play the astrolabe and then fetch shock the breeding pool i guess we cast astrolabe first in case we draw anger of the gods that would be really great anger nope um yeah so we can fetch shock for breeding pool and then make an elk i guess the opponent gets to attack with champion of the parish if they want to like drawing one human and then attacking with champion of the parish is kind of annoying um so on the other hand if we make a food that might be better because then then if the opponent plays a creature they're attacking oko for five and the next turn we get to elk something and then eat the charming prince if they want to kill oko basically because they would need to attack with these two yeah i think we make a food Shoot, if we're making a food, I should not have shocked myself. That was that was pretty silly. Uh, let's see. Well, now that I did that, do we elk this? Um, I guess so, yeah. Since, yeah, champion actually can't attack through it until they get two things. All right, yeah. Clearly, clearly this is my subconscious telling me that this is the better play. Thalia's lieutenant. Oh, no, you hate to see that. Oh no. At us. I mean, I guess we take it. Alright, engineered explosives. That's kind of cool. Um, EE on one. Unfortunately, kills the astrolabe. That sucks. Ooh, okay. Here's an idea. What if we trade the astrolabe for Charming Prince? And then we put EE on one. That's not bad, but I feel like we can get greedier. I feel like we can uh, just make a food and then try to naturally trade Charming Prince for Astrolabe. Oh, wait, no, no, no. We need to, because uh, we need to blow it up. Hmm. Well, then I guess we can trade food for Charming Prince. Yeah, that's not bad. And then I guess another thing to think about is this Scalding Tarn does turn into a uh, Mystical Sanctuary. So is it better to draw a Braid or Lightning Bolt versus Random Card? And the answer is probably yes. So yeah, the plan is probably going to be to block the Charming Prince just because it blocks the most damage and then blow up the EE. So Charming Prince and Thalia's Lieutenant will live. Uh... What the heck is this? I'm sure. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Well, we get to eat the food. Hmm. So let's see. If we eat the food and then blow up the EE, we're taking three on this and then... Let's see. Three, so that cancels out the food and then lethal. So that doesn't work. Um... But we need to either blow up the EE or eat the food, because otherwise this just fives us and then we die. So if we eat the food and then take five, we go to three. We block here and then blow up the EE and then take two, go to dead? Hmm. Oh no, we would be at three. Take two, go to one. That turns off our Scalding Tarn, which is really annoying, but I guess it gives us an out to drawing Anger of the Gods, so... Uh, yeah. So block this one. Oh, shoot, we're a mana short. I forgot that we need to crack that. All right, yeah, we're dead. Unfortunate. Let's see, do we want to change anything for game two? Sorry, game three? I think we're good. All right, we will go first. Uh, Lightning Bolt and Ren and Six sounds pretty good to me. I'm going to just play the... Steam Men's tapped, uh, because if the opponent plays Noble Hierarch, we'll just want to run six minus on it. So there's basically nothing that we'd want to bolt on turn one. Or if they play a champion of the parish, we'd want to run six minus on it. If they play Aether Vial, obviously we can't bolt it, so you know. Right, here's a Cavern of Souls into a thing that Renin Six is gonna kill. Like, yes, we're taking three on this, but come on. We're, we're getting so much value here. Definitely understand why this card is banned in Legacy. 
Pew! This is basically a two-mana stone rain right there. All right, island from the opponent. Into meddling mage on a braid. Huh, interesting choice. Um, yeah, I think I'll cast an astrolabe, see what we draw, and then cast serum visions so that our scry is a little better informed. Minus will plus this also. Bone Crusher Giant, not bad. Um, these cards seem good. I'm not sure if we'll have quite enough mana to want to Serum Visions because we might want to put EE on some other number and then blow it up. Um, actually, I guess next turn we have Stomp and also Serum Visions. So I guess putting both of these on top isn't so bad. Okay, and again, opponent doesn't have uh, Aether Vial, so we don't really need to worry about shenanigans. I'm fairly certain they don't play uh, counter magic, and if they do, I think I'd rather have them counter this bolt. Okay, so there's an Aether Vial. Strongly considering putting that Engineered Explosives on one, especially if this is a one drop, which it is. Uh, so we're not countering that. Um, actually, I guess I could just kill Champion with Renin 6. That seems pretty good. It actually seems really good. They can't put a zero drop in, right? That, yeah. We could also just cast Jace. Uh, let's see. I guess that means we're shuffling away the engineered explosives, but I think I'm okay with that. If if that means getting Jason to play, I mean they can then uh, theoretically just play a land and and put a Mantis Rider into a play to attack one of our creatures, but. You know, or one of our planeswalkers, but we shouldn't be able to kill both. I don't think we need another Ren and Six, and then Mystic Sanctuary is looking pretty okay. Actually, I guess with Ren, we don't really want to draw more lands, so let's do that. Yeah, but if we could get into um, if we could get into time warping and Mystic Sanctuary territory, then I think we're just gonna win. Meddling Mage. If we need to get rid of that, we'll Jace. On a Braid. Interesting that the opponent is so afraid of a Braid. I don't think there's anything the opponent can put in on one that we really care about all that much. So I guess let's just zero now. And then... Oh, it's the Lonely Island. Ooh. Fires is pretty nice, but is it necessary? Probably not. Honestly, I think that the two mana per turn is going to become a limitation and become kind of a liability. Whatever. I'm going to put these two back. Uh, because we have Ren and Six plusing every turn, we basically have all the Mystic Sanctuaries we could want. So, first, let's just get a basic and warp ourselves and Ren. Well, I guess actually now that I'm thinking about it, uh, Ren probably wants to get back to Lonely Island, so I guess we don't have as many as many Mystic Sanctuaries as I thought, but whatever. So the strategy here is to get the Mystic Sanctuary, put our Time Warp on top, and then draw it with Jace. All right, yeah, so this is looking pretty bad, and I don't think we need an Astrolabe. Oh, I guess we're actually I guess we're actually not scrying or not shuffling. We already did that. Whatever. Chandra seems nice. Uh this might be Fires of Invention territory now. So now one thing that we get to do is Oh actually yeah, not quite. I wanted to cast Fires, Chandra, and Time Warp, but actually that doesn't work. Um yeah, I guess second verse, same as the first, right? Actually, let's see, we get to just cycle the Lonely Island here in order to draw this time warp. Yeah, let's do that. And then we can start Jace plussing. Uh, let's see, did we cast a spell this turn? I don't think we did, right? 
Yeah, activate some earlier Renin 6, return Scalding Tarn. Yeah, discard Scalding Tarn. Yeah, okay, so I guess this is the turn to Fires plus Time Warp. And then next turn, uh, we will Chandra plus Time Warp. That seems pretty sick. I think Chandra is much more likely to ultimate than Jace, so I'm just going to zero Jace. Okay, or we're just going to win the match. I'll see you for the next one. Okay, here we are for match three. We won the die roll. Um, oh man, if this castle Vantress was a fetch land... Sorry, we've lost the die roll. Um, if this castle Vantress was a fetch land, this would be a snap keep. As it stands, it's close. We really, really need a fetch land to make this hand good. Got two shots at it. It's definitely greedy, but I am going to keep it. The fact that we have Lightning Bolt to keep us alive is definitely helpful. Let's see what the opponent's up to. Mishra's Bobble. Uh, this is usually Death Shadow. Alright, uh, I think I am going to Shock and Serum Visions, because if we can set up a turn 2 Ren 6, that would be fantastic. Um, and it looks like we can. I'll put Serum Visions on top in case anything goes wrong. Unfortunately, this is a rather painful run in six, but I think it's going to be worth it just to try to play it early. Breeding pool, interesting. Um, it's possible that this is an Oko based deck. Yeah, it's looking more like an Urza Oko deck, especially that given that they didn't crack the Mishra's Bobble. Wow, the preemptive EEX2. That is really smart by the opponent. So I don't really want to cast Renin 6 anymore. Uh, we can eventually Oko to Elk the Engineered Explosives. Um, I guess that's probably the play next turn. And then after that, we can cast Renin 6. All right, they're looking at our Serum Visions. We're probably not going to draw anyway. Ice Fang Kodal. Kodal? I don't know how to pronounce this. The Snake. Interesting. I wonder what they were expecting when they put EE on 2 and they have Ice Fang in their hand. It's just a little weird. I'm not going to bolt it. Juice or Envisions anyway. Okay, so we can Oko to Elk the EE, but I don't think we want to do that now. We can Oko and just make a food. Seems pretty reasonable. They're not holding up Metallic Rebuke, but they could be holding up, I don't know, Spell Pierce or something, but whatever. Uh, next turn, if we want to resolve Renin 6, we can Elk the Engineered Explosives and then Renin 6, and then Serum Visions. So, like, there's some decent options. Notably, Mystic Sanctuary is not online right now, so it will enter tap next turn. So, these two are not currently options unless we draw a land. Still a little confused on exactly what the opponent's on. This thing does not yet have Death Touch. They need one more Snow Permanent. Hmm. It's an Oko battle. Interesting. An EE on zero, so that's probably aiming for our food. Interestingly, that'll also hit this EE, which now has uh, no actual text. Okay. Hmm. So we could now cast. Chandra and Fires, but we don't ha actually have anything to do with it right now. So one option is we can Elk our food, uh, hold it back in case this Engineered Explosives becomes an Elk, uh, Renin 6 to minus kill Ice Fang, Lightning Bolt to kill this Engineered Explosives. The opponent's going to be left with a board of just Oko and EE. We'll have a 3-3 blocker uh, and two Planeswalkers on board. And that doesn't sound too bad. It does mean we're taking some damage off this. Um, but I think that's fine. We also get to set up with Serum Visions. I think I like that. The opponent has three cards in hand. We would have Fires, Chandra, Mystic Sanctuary, and whatever we're setting up with uh, Serum. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's start by shocking the Steam Vents. And then seeing what we draw, see if that changes the plans, which it doesn't. Uh, Lightning Bolt. I don't think that's a card we want right now. And definitely not Scalding Tarn. Alright, P 
Pew, there goes the snake. Pew, there goes the elk. And here's another elk. Okay, uh, we could attack Oko, but I think that's a bad idea. So the opponent does have the option of elking this EE or just blowing up our food, but I feel like neither of those is especially appealing to the opponent. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, wow. Gained control of the food. That's pretty sick. All right. Down goes Oko. That's annoying. Savor the moment. That is just what the doctor ordered. So what we're going to do is assume that the opponent doesn't have any counter spells. It really seems like it really seems like they don't. Um, then we'll save the moment, and we'll go ahead and get a fetch land to get a Mystic Sanctuary to put that save the moment right back on top. Next turn is going to be save the moment plus Chandra, so that will be pretty good. Okay, they're getting back. Archmage's Charm, that's fine. Not sure if they realize we're going to take another turn, or what. Um, yeah, let's just Chandra zero here, or Chandra plus here. See if we exile like Time Warp or something even better. Uh, no, we will not cast that. But here's a save of the moment. And I guess if we wanted, we could even just wait on fetching. Um, See what we draw and then fetch to get Mystic Sanctuary, put Save the Moment on top, and then Chandra Plus. I don't think it makes a huge difference either way. Yeah, I'm just going to fetch now. I really don't think it matters. Right, let's see what we hit. Misty Rainforest. Didn't need that anyway. Keep ticking up our Planeswalkers. Uh, notably, after this Mystic Sanctuary, we'll need to uh, play the one in our hand. Because there's no more in the deck now. Let's see what we hit. We hit winning the game. Very nice. All right, so it seems like Mystical Dispute and Veil of Summer are pretty reasonable. Interestingly, I feel like a braid is actually not especially good in this matchup um i just feel like the artifacts that they're playing aren't actually relevant artifacts you know cards like arkham's astrolabe or engine and engineered explosives that they're about to blow up i do think it's probably better than lightning bolt but i feel like we don't want two of them i'm not really sure about engineered explosives here they seem to play a lot of different converted mana costs i mean i guess we maybe can get them by putting ee on zero but also they like kind of got us by putting EE on zero. Maybe this is even better than a braid. I could see an argument for that. Something like bringing these four in. Something like these four in, and then a fires, a saver, and two bolts out. Definitely one of the issues is I'm not 100% sure what the opponent's doing, but I feel like this is pretty reasonable. Uh, we can always change it up for game three if it comes to that. Okay, here we are for game two. Uh, we have about a billion Mystic Sanctuaries in our hand. Unfortunately, this isn't to keep. Yeah. Okay, how about this one? Mm. Oh my god, this is so, so close to being good. I mean, we pretty much have everything that we need except the lands. The, I think this is definitely a keep. It's just a question of what do we put back. So the maximally greedy thing to do is put back Mystic Sanctuary, assuming that we're going to hit a uh, a green source, a fetch land for Ren and Six off of the Serum Visions. Um, if we don't, it's a complete and total disaster. And if we do, Ren and Six provide, provides us with a constant stream of land so that we can follow up with everything else. Um... It's just so greedy, but then these are like all of the components that we need to make this work, right? Turn four, fires into saver, turn five, jace, brainstorm, do something. 
I'm going to take the greedy line and we'll see if we regret it. Okay, opponent's going Misty into Breeding Pool into Gilded Goose. Man, Gilded Goose doesn't even die to Ren and Six. What a broken card. Um, so here's an interesting thought. I could actually get a Breeding Pool here just because we're slightly more likely to hit a red source for Ren and Six. And also now that we have Oko, we're a little bit more incentivized to get green, even though we have Fire's Invention. So I am going to do that. All right, I hope my greed pays off. Ooh, not quite. Uh, Cryptic definitely to the bottom. And then the Snow Island lets us play Oko on three. It doesn't help us cast Fires, and it helps us cast Jace. Well, I feel like if I was, if I was greedy this far, I need to continue being greedy and hope that we can cast Ren and Six. These, these are definitely uh, not the safest of plays I'm making here, but they do have high upside. If we can top deck a fetch land, then we're in okay looking shape. Oh man, turn to Oko. What is this, pre van standard? All right, and there's a the food to continue feeding the goose. And my greed does not pay off. Bummer. Bummer. All right, yeah, so it does seem like the opponent is probably an Urza deck. Let's see if they cast Urza this turn. I didn't know that uh, Urza plays Ice Fang Kotal. I thought they might have been some weird blue-green mid rangey pile, but there's probably an Urza in there. All right, well, we can play Oko, but it's kind of late. This also looks like it could be, I guess, a... Metallic Rebuke or something. Oko also gets hit pretty hard, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. All right, Archmage's turn. Right, we saw that one last game. Good to know. Uh, they have only two cards left. Um, and if we draw a red source, we get to Fires into Saver into two Planeswalkers. So, like, it's not too bad. Okay, it's weird to me that they activated the Bobble there. I would have definitely thought they were going for Elking the Bobble, but... I guess they can just make more food with the goose, so maybe that's their plan. All right, Oko makes a food. Okay, we get smacked for three. And that's it. All right, there's a Veil of Summer that doesn't really do anything. Uh, yeah, this game isn't... I mean, this game isn't over-over, but it's it's pretty over. Yeah, opponent's making a food. We can at least play out one more turn, because uh, next turn we're dead on board, so. Opponent just elks this food, hits us for six, down to five, and then if we don't draw something, then we just die. Death by food elk, I guess. Death by an elk named food. It seems kind of inappropriate that a boar, a pig, you know, is getting turned into an elk. I guess it is kind of magical, though, so, you know, whatever. I was hoping the opponent would cast a blue spell so we could cast Veil of Summer as a cantrip, but... All right, we're dead. Okay, so... Is this Engineered Explosives a good idea? Mm. Like, it can slow down the opponent, but it's not actually that good, and it doesn't slow them down that much, since, like, if you're killing Oko's food, then Oko's still on the board and still going to produce more food, still going to attack... It's just not that powerful. I think I'm going to cut it and focus more on the combo now that we're on the play. Uh, it's true that we're only running three fires, but I think that's fine. I think even just having some Planeswalkers on board and then casting a save of the moment without fires is okay. Um, yeah, this hand's not great, but it does work towards Achandra, which is not too bad. And we've got some cantrips, so we can hopefully draw into both lands and good spells. Yeah, it's not a great hand, but... It's, I think, keepable. If we draw fires, then this is pretty good, so maybe I shouldn't have cut the, uh, the fourth fires. I'm not sure if I want to play Mystic Sanctuary next turn or Snow Island. It basically depends on if we're likely to get the three islands in play that Mystic Sanctuary needs. Right now we only have one in hand, so that's not great. 
if we basically think this mystic sanctuary isn't going to do much, then oh no, is this a Thoughtseize? Oh no. Well, there goes our hand. Jeez. Yeah, that's kind of brutal. Chandra was like kind of the only gas that we had, but I guess at this point we can still draw pretty well. We can draw like Ren and Six would be I guess we don't have a fetch land. It wouldn't actually be that good, but it would be good. Um we draw like Oko, cast that on turn three. You have draws. Oh, wow. Takes our Serum Visions. So they probably have an answer to all this other stuff. Um, I think my plan right now is to just cast Savor the Moment on turn three. And then we won't untap. And we'll maybe play the Mystic Sanctuary on turn four. Basically, Savor the Moment is going to be a really bad explorer. Kind of just want to cantrip it, honestly. So really bad explorer. I'm confused. Opponent goes for a Mox Opal into... All right, there's a Breeding Pool. Another Thoughtseize. Oh, okay. That explains the last Thoughtseize then. Um, yeah, given that we have no gas for this saver, I definitely just want to cantrip both of these as fast as possible. Are they are they thinking of countering this? I mean, that's fine. Okay. The I, I'm happy to use Savor the Moment as counter bait. All right, there's an Oko. That explains the Mox Opal last turn, so it can get elked. Or is it just? Are they just making food? Yeah. There's a legendary elk named Mox Opal. There's a time warp that really doesn't do anything. Um, can trip this save of the moment, see what our really bad explorer gets us. The answer is a fat wad of nothing. So I really hate making this play, but I'm going to uh, fetch out a breeding pool as our third island, and then play Mystic Sanctuary putting Serum Visions on top, just because we have so little going for us that we really, really need to draw something, and Serum Visions will set us up to, you know, if we draw a Jace or a, um, a Chandra or something, we can potentially cast it, although in the face of this Oko and these Elks, that's looking like not the greatest of plans. All right, there's an Astrolabe from the opponent. And another Astrolabe from the opponent. How great would it be if the opponent forgets about the legendary roll and just casts another Mox Opal? That would be really cool. Alright, there's a food. Uh, so notably, the opponent is holding up Metallic Rebuke. Which, unfortunately, we really can't do anything about. Uh, let's just start with Serum Visions and see where we go. <laughs> Nowhere. What if we cycle the Lonely Island? Fires. Okay. Well, we could cast fires right now. Um, but that really doesn't get us anywhere. I guess it sets up for future turns. And it's also a reasonable counter bait for the Mystical Dispute or the uh, Metallic Rebuke that I expect they have. Cool. So we do need to put something together real fast because we're at 13 right now and the opponent can just elk elk and we're dead in two. So I'd like to draw I'd like to draw Ren and Six. Then we can go Ren and Six, get a land, use the land, cast time warp. Yep. Elking an astrolabe. And at this point we really can't play around anything. We're going to six, we're dead next turn. We just have to play into potential counter magic because that's our only option. Hong Kong, there's a goose. All right, there's Ren and Six. Um, gotta go with the plan, right? Yeah, if anything gets countered, then it gets countered. Um, there's Scalding Tarn. Now, interestingly, one thing to think about here is do we get a Mystic Sanctuary for Save of the Moment? So let's think about this for a sec. Uh, if we do that and we cast Time Warp this turn, we will get to untap and we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lands in play, which means we can cast Savor the Moment, get another land, uh, 
crack it and put time warp on top. Then we'll draw the time warp. So I think the answer is yes, we would like to savor the moment here. So go ahead and get a Mystic Sanctuary, put savor the moment on top, and see if the opponent has a counter spell. Nice. All right, so now we will once again return a land. And this time we're going to Mystic Sanctuary for Time Warp. All right. So we can't quite Lonely Sandbar this turn, but that's fine. I think we're going to want to get our last Mystic Sanctuary here. Yes, let's play the Scalding Tarn first. Not that it really makes a difference. All right, so now we gotta get back the Lonely Island. Might as well cycle this first, see where it gets us. Nowhere, okay. Um, then I'm going to not play this Misty because there's a chance that we need to uh, ultimate Ren and Six next turn, and then basically just all our lands become cantrips. Okay, nice. There we go. Now we have won the game. So what happens now is we take one more turn. Uh, we ultimate Ren and Six next turn, and then we just discard the Misty to cast Time Warp. Ren and Six is going to live, so then we just keep plussing and plussing and plussing Ren and Six to keep getting a land back and then casting the thing. All right. I would like one emblem, please. Cool. I'm not even going to bother casting Fires of Invention. It uh, doesn't really do anything here. Nice. See you for the next match. All right, here we are for match number four. We've won the die roll. Um. Oh boy, how greedy do we want to be? If we if we fetch out a basic mountain and then cast Arkham's Astrolabe, uh, any any untapped land casts Ren and Six. I mean, the rest of this hand is just also good. Right, we've got the turn four fires into Saver into Chandra into other stuff. This is insanely greedy, but I am going to keep it. We do have quite a lot of lands in the deck. Um, obviously, it would be kind of unfortunate to draw something like a Mystic Sanctuary that comes in tapped, but oof. Or it would be kind of unfortunate to draw a Lightning Bolt. Basically, the fact that we get two draws towards the land and Ren and Six gets to then take uh, Scalding Tarn uh, means we're going to hit the rest of our land drops. Talisman of Curiosity. How curious. Uh, unfortunate. Always punished. Okay, I don't know if we're saving this bolt for something, so I guess I'm just going to not cast it for now. Welding jar. I don't really know what's going on. All right, I, I'm going to cast the bolt. I don't really know what it's going towards if, if we're not casting it now and i'd really rather not discard land oh my god that's so brutal well this is the punishment i get for being extremely greedy uh still kind of confused what the opponent is up to some kind of red or some kind of simic nonsensey thing all right, well, let's see if this extremely late Ren and Six can get the job done. All right, that's a good sign. I mean, just don't fully understand what's going on. This Inventor's Fair, usually I feel, is something that comes out of, like, uh, lantern control, things like that, but this does not seem like that deck. I'm going to cast a save at the moment here as an explorer. Uh, mostly because if I, what? 
four of invention? X4? What's going on here? Sorcerer's Spyglass, interesting. Probably naming Ren and Six. All right, so uh, I've changed my mind here. I don't want to cast Save at the moment anymore. Um, basically, the reason that I wanted to is because if we plus Ren and Six, get the Sculling turn back, we would have eight cards in hand and have to discard, so Save at the moment brings us back down to seven. Uh, but yeah, I wonder why they waited until that moment. I guess they just didn't want Ren and Six plusing. Ren and Six, yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think it really makes sense to. I don't think it really makes sense to cast Saber the Moment here anymore because we'd rather try to get Chandra down and then start taking extra turns. So, I guess I'll get a Steam Vents in case they turn off Arkham's Astrolabe and somehow get rid of our fires. It's an argument for getting Breeding Pool there, but we don't have any green cards in hand, so there's only four more left in the deck too now that we've drawn a Ren and Six. Ensnaring Bridge, that is fine. Damping Sphere, that one's actually annoying because um, we can't go off this turn anymore, but still gonna... Well, let's see. Do I just cast Chandra and plus then? And then next turn, it's Fires plus Saver. And then next turn, I guess it's Saver. That actually sounds kind of better. So, sure. Kokoro is gone. So I guess this is just the uh, Artifact Prison deck then, not Lantern Control. I wonder if the green splash is just for ancient stirrings or if they have anything else going. Uh oh. I don't like that. Transmuting to Laria West. Not sure what they can get, but they don't have that much mana to work with right now, so we might be able to just kill them. Oh man. We're for five. What the heck? Do they even play five drops? I don't know. Well, that's a bummer. Yep. Chandra down. So one thing that I kind of want to draw is Oko, uh, because then we would be able to elk these things. And given that we have roughly a billion extra turns in our hand, we might as well just time warp ourselves. Nice. So I think we're going to elk the one on Chandra. <laughs> okay, we're going to elk the one on Chandra and then start taking Chandra up and, you know, get to like save the moment time warp and stuff. Uh, we get to emblem Chandra and then kill the opponent because they don't currently have the, um, the witch being or about. Okay, in terms of sideboarding, a braid seems great. EE seems great. Negate seems great. Mystical Dispute hits were, but not much else, so I don't think we want it. I'm not really sure about things like Surgical or Veil of Summer. I don't know exactly how much counter magic they run, so I don't know if Veil of Summer would actually be good. And then Surgical can sometimes uh, beat things like their, um, their Crucible of Worlds lock with like Tectonic Edge or the... Uh, the other thing, the Mill Island Ipnu Rivulet. Uh, but I don't even know if they run that anymore, because that's some pretty old technology that may or may not still be in vogue. So let's take out Bolts. Those seem bad. I don't really like Exhaustion against Mox Opal decks. And I feel like trimming one saver, one fires is probably fine. Yeah, let's try it like that. All right, here we are for game two. We are going second. Uh, turn to Ren, yes please. Since I don't think we care about our life total very much, I think it's going to be fetch a polluted delta, or fetch a breeding pool off of polluted delta, and then serum visions. Just Okay, never mind. Just play a breeding pool, and then uh, see what we got here. Um, 
Both of these cards are actually good, but unfortunately we can't cast Ren and Six without fetching. Bummer. I think I'd rather have Savor the Moment right now since we have Fires in hand. I'll put Serum on top anyway just in case we get like Thought Seized or something. Spellskite. Huh. What does that even... I'm not even sure. Alright, like I said, I don't think we... Oh, I should have played a different land than if we don't care about our life total. Um, yeah, but I don't think we care about our life total very much, so I'm going to get the Steam Vents. The reason to play a different land there is so that we have the... Uh, I guess we will have the Scalding Tarn in hand, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, having Scalding Tarn is a little bit better than having Flooded Strand or Polluted Delta, just because Tarn gets the Snow Mountain, whereas the other ones don't. Psy Master Thopterist. Okay. Okay. All right. Some some regrets here. All right. Mystic Sanctuary, huh? Um. I kind of want to do that save of the moment thing again, just because we would otherwise discard. Uh, but it's also not actually that good <laughs> because we do really want to fires and then savor the moment and then jace and do other stuff so i guess we just plus with no target since we would be discarding a fetch land anyway yeah so that sigh will certainly get annoying but luckily the opponent only has four cards in hand after they draw so hopefully they don't have anything too meaningful you know, they can bring down Ren down to three. And what else do you got, opponent? Interesting. EE -E on one. I guess they only have one color. Hmm. Looks like they could be holding up counter magic, which is a little bit annoying, but I would much rather have them counter um, Fires of Invention than a spell like Jace, so... I'm just going to play Delta out, whatever. They, they can know that we drew a fetch land. So it looks like they might just not have... Uh, they might just not have interaction right now, so that's kind of good for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume that they don't have interaction, so... It's unfortunate that we have like a billion lands in hand, but at least we get to make good use of them. We get to put Savor the Moment on top. And then we get to draw it with Jace. And then we get to win the match. Cool. I'll see you for the last one. All right, here we are for the fifth and final match. We've lost the die roll. Um... Well, this hand's not great. Uh, one of the rough parts here is that even though we have Bolt and Oko, we can't actually cast both of them given this hand because we only have one fetch land. The, uh, yeah, the lack of a stomping grounds certainly hurting here, but I think this is still keepable given that we have enough interaction to survive. Uh, we can Bolt something early if we need to and then survive until we play Oko. All right, Flooded Strand from the opponent, Basic Island, and Astrolabe. Probably an Arza deck. But maybe they're secretly a mirror match, right? I like that. Maybe it's secretly a mirror match. Okay, just a polluted delta from the opponent. Uh, I think... I think it's secretly a mirror match is what I think. Just good old polluted delta, Snow Island, Arkham's Astrolabe on both sides of the battlefield. That's some, that's some good Snow Island art over there. Breeding Pool. Could still be a mirror match, but I think the opponent's a lot more likely to just be Urza. All right, another Snow Island from the opponent. And I think we're going to make this pretty close to a mirror match by fetching out a Breeding Pool here. All right, let's see. So we could start jamming, or we could just pretend to have counter magic here. And then actually hold up Cryptic Command next turn, which I think is probably better. Plus, given that we have more lands in hand and we'll have a Castle Vantress online, I think it's 
Interesting. Opponents drawing two cards. Sure. I think it's pretty reasonable to just do this, but not 100% sure. All right. It looks like our paths are diverging because we are going to get a tapped steam vents. All right. So we could start jamming. But I think I'd rather keep Cryptic Command up and see what else the opponent's up to. They have a full grip and four lands in play that's pretty dangerous and also quite possibly Cryptic Command. Uh, so we could just run into their Cryptic Command by... Or rather what I meant is we could cast our own Cryptic Command now to bounce one of their lands and try to put them farther behind. But I think they're still going to have counter magic and stuff, so I think that's not worth it. Actually, we do get to... Well, they're Mystic Sanctuary and they're draw two, so that's pretty good. Ice Fang Quaddle. That is fine. I'd really like them to tap out for like an Urza or something so that we can just counter it and go off, but I don't think we're going to have any such luck. So one thing that I'm considering is bouncing the Breeding Pool at their end step. Uh, they have the option of, you know, countering... Uh, our cryptic command but if they do that then they're going to be tapped down and we can potentially play fires and then uh, cast time warp so we can potentially go off after that which honestly sounds pretty appealing i also think we're probably not going to win by playing the waiting game and if things go real bad we can just put the cryptic command back on top if we need to uh, return target permanent to its owner's hand draw a card yeah so if the opponent taps down to cryptic back i would be pretty happy because then we get to fire zone invention and time warp which is quite good hmm right i forgot about that that's annoying we do still get to slam fires and then maybe jace fires jace sounds pretty good here i don't think they have spell pierce yeah and then Shoot, I guess if they have Oko, then Jace might die here, so maybe we plus ourselves so that they can't just slam Oko, uh, animate the Astrolabe, and then do all that. If we uh, if we Jace them, they're just going to crack the Misty because uh, they can... Oh, man, I forgot about Mystic Sanctuary. They can get back Cryptic Command. They can bounce something. I'm still just going to plus us. This is almost like drawing a card. There's a lot of cards in our deck that are blanks right now. Like Scalding Tarn is currently not where we want to be. I've got plenty of lands in our hand already. All right, so the good news is now the opponent has multiple things that they have to deal with here. Uh, all right, so it looks like they are getting Cryptic Command back. So it is kind of a tough choice then between bouncing Jace or bouncing Fires. And again, Oko is not an option to kill Jace here. Oh man, is this double Oko? Are you serious? All right. Well, I take that back. <laughs> Looks like Jace is dying. All right. EE on zero. Yep, setting up to Elk again. All right, so I'm going to just hope that the opponent doesn't have Force of Negation. Um, yeah, that, that sounds pretty good. Hope the opponent doesn't have Force of Negation. I'm going to go Chandra plus, see if we hit something good. And then if we don't, we Time Warp. I guess we can, I guess we can Scry 2 first. And that informs our decision. The opponent can't have any soft counter magic on nothing. So those do not count as good. Unfortunate. Jace is normally pretty good, but we do need to time warp here in order to not, uh, you know, in order to get, keep the ball rolling. All right, Mystic Sanctuary is nice. These are pretty good. So we get to Mystic Sanctuary and put time warp on top, and then plus Chandra to exile time warp cast it then we get to oko to elkar astrolabe and i think we just go face 
let's see. So I like the lonely sandbar on top. So I think what I'm going to do here is yeah, use the Mystic Sanctuary, put Time Warp on top, and then win the match. Great. OK. Mystical Dispute seems great. The Gate seems great. Hmm. Still unsure about Engineered Explosives, and honestly still unsure about a Braid. Again, I just feel like the opponent has a lot of artifacts like Arkham's Astrolabe or Engineered Explosives where they're not actually good at Braid targets. Or, you know, like Oko's Food. They're just not actually good at Braid targets. Um, also pretty unsure about Bone Crusher Giant. It's like better value than Lightning Bolt in that you get a creature. But the creature is just not that important. Like it, it trades with Oko's Foods, right, his, his Elks. Yeah, it's very possible we just try to go for a reasonable plan A. Oh, the opponent does have counter magic. Those seem good. Um, it's possible that we just go for a strong plan A by boarding something like those out, these in. Yeah, let's try it like that. All right, here we are for game two. We're on the draw. This hand has some cantrips in it. Uh, I think probably turn one, basic island... Astrolabe, turn two, if we draw Ren, we get to cast it. Otherwise, we get Serum Visions and possibly Lonely Sandbar. This all seems good to me. I think we're getting Thought Seized. Poor Thoughts. If I were the opponent, I would probably take Cryptic Command, but I don't actually know if that's the most important card to take here. Just given that Arkham's Astrolabe and Serum Visions... Oh, okay. Guess Snapcaster is a good value card, too. Uh, yeah, I'm sticking with the plan of casting Astrolabe, and then if we draw Ren and Six, then we are good to cast it. Nice. Ooh. Or we can wait a turn and have Veil of Summer up to protect it. That sounds even better. Even better. So yeah, this decides whether we're playing Lonely Sandbar or just drawing an island or drawing a land, which it looks like we're just going to be drawing a land. Uh, so I think I'd like to cycle Lonely Sandbar. So I think I'd like to shock this breeding pool, draw the Polluted Delta, and then awkwardly shock, fetch shock the Polluted Delta to, uh, to cast Ren and Six. And then do we want the Mystic Sanctuary? I guess so. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we don't. Eh, oh well. Actually, I think we do. Ren and Six is going to be plusing for Lonely Sandbar. I was thinking Ren and Six is going to be plusing for Fetch Lands, but I think it's probably better to just keep drawing cards with Lonely Sandbar. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Or maybe we just want to zap the Ice Fang Quaddle. Yeah, so awkwardly, because of our uh, the fact that we only have one breeding pool, if we spend the Astrolabe to make red mana with this uh, Snow Island, then we don't actually have Veil of Summer up, which is kind of annoying. So... That is why we're gonna fetch shock on the um on the polluted delta. What's going on over there? Bobble into opal. Wow, the opponent's taken a lot of damage. Yeah, they fetch shocked twice and thought seized. What are you, Death Shadow? Okay, so let's cycle the Lonely Island. Then let's do that awkward fetch shock that I was just talking about. Pass it off as, you know, oh, I forgot I had the Astrolabe on board. <laughs> now, I think we want to zap the Quaddle. There is an argument for just plussing, though, just ignoring this and. Interesting. I think we just zap the Quaddle. Kotal? Okay, Cotley? Still don't know. Still don't know. All right, there's another. Icy Fang. A little confused what the opponent's up to. Oh, brutal. We'll go with Thief of Crowns. Yep. That's a big quaddle. All right, unfortunate. Byron and Six, you did good. Could cycle Veil of Summer to draw a card. That sounds not worth it to me. Time warp, eh? 
So I think we just want to draw a land. So I think we play the Mystic Sanctuary without getting anything, hold up Cryptic Command, and then end step, I guess probably bounce draw the Mox Opal since they're probably going to elk it. The reason we want to draw land, of course, is so that we can cast Fires with Veil of Summer back up. Although I guess if we do that, we're not actually casting Time Warp that turn, since those two will count as the two spells that we've cast for Fires. This is a little bit annoying, but also I think we're okay. Thoughtseize. Oh. Maybe we're just going to cast Veil of Summer now, then? It's basically Cryptic Command, except it only costs, you know, one mana. This beats Mystical Dispute, which is nice. The opponent can even hard cast, but whatever. All right, nice. OK, so we are taking kind of a lot of damage, so I feel like we are kind of pressured into just casting fires into Time Warp next turn. Yeah, I do feel kind of pressured into it, given that the opponent has enough to put us to one, turns off our fetch lands. It's pretty brutal. Uh, metallic Rebuke. No, I'm good. Um, Let's put back on top. Guess Serum Visions. So now we get to Serum, look for something meaningful, which we don't find. Again, these fetch lands are going to be turned off. Oh, brutal. Another thought sees for the opponent. I wonder what they're actually going to take, though. OK. Seems reasonable. We go to one. Yeah, that's turned off. Um, time Warp basically just cycles. Yeah, that's pretty rough. So another option was we could have Serum Visioned to try to draw an untapped land and then also cast Time Warp, and then the next turn we have Oko plus I don't know what. But uh, does this do anything? Doesn't look like it. Let's see, yeah, even if we Chandra minus, we can't cast anything else. Uh, let's see what Serum Visions draws us. Negate, not good enough. All right, we'll, we'll go out the, the good, honest way. By our own hand. All right, do we want to change anything for game three? I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. There are arguments for like engineered explosives or anger of the gods to try to clean up some elks, but I don't think that's the way to, I don't think that's the axis that we want to be fighting on. I think we just want to be trying to do our own combo faster and maybe with Veil of Summer backup. It's certainly possible that uh, maybe I should have played Renin 6 on turn two, even without Veil of Summer backup uh, that last game, but I felt like uh, Renin 6 was going to be our ticket to winning the game. I guess I didn't consider uh, the Wombo combo. Shoot. Sand's not good enough. This is the same hand, but worse. It, it's not actually worse, but it is the same hand. It's also unkeepable. Keep in mind, we're a 25 land deck. We just saw two one landers. That's, that's cool. I mean, this curve is great. If I could guarantee that we would draw a land every turn of the game, I would snap keep this, but... Uh, yeah, this I guess we keep. We're on few enough resources that I don't think we can afford the luxury of Veil vale of Summer. Well, actually, I guess another argument is we just put some stuff to the bottom and then get the opponent to... Um, like, if we put the two fires to the bottom, then we get the opponent to Thought Seize us. Veil vale of Summer actually brings us closer to parity. The opponent is at six. So maybe we just get rid of these fires. Yeah, all right. Kind of rough, but we'll see what we can do. Hopefully this Veil of Summer is good. All right. Show me the watery grave. Show me. Aw, oh, come on. Brutal. Opponent might just be going for turn two Oko, which I guess is reasonable. Maybe we should have gone for... Uh, maybe we should have gone for having a strong proactive plan as well. I guess there was actually an argument to not fetching there. Mainly because then we get to... Oh, okay. 
Um, yeah, I guess I'll hurt myself and then cast Serum Visions. This is kind of a uh, super telegraphing Veil of Summer, but also whatever. Ren and Six seems good. Fires would be good if Ren and Six resolves, which it may or may not. I'm going to put Fires to the bottom in case Ren gets countered. Oh, shoot. I shouldn't be F6 right now. Got to be anticipating that Thought Seize. Come on. Dude, what is this? Standard? Yeah, turn two Oko is pretty good. Luckily, I think Renin 6 is going to survive, but unluckily, I don't really know what else we can do. And I just realized we want to crack the Scalding Tarn for a Steam Vents, probably, so I don't think I should be X F6. Right. There's another Honk Honker. It'd be really funny if they targeted. Oh, they're not even Elking. Huh. No! Brutal. Yeah, Pithing Needle on Renin 6 is backbreaking. Well, luckily, since Oko didn't make an elk, we can just cast Chandra. I think I would rather do that than cast Negate. We are pretty far behind right now. Let's not put that on top. All right, let's see what we got. Nah, there's, there's a lot of reasons we're not casting that Renin 6. All right, yeah, food gets elked. And food goes after Chandra. Makes sense. Right, now, what does the opponent do with three cards in hand? Nothing. Hmm. Rough. So I kind of wanted to draw a land so that we would have Cryptic Command with Veil of Summer backup. Because it, as it stands, it feels to me like the opponent has a... Uh... <sighs> we could cast Jace and then minus the food, and then the opponent only gets to kill one of Jace or Chandra. It feels to me like the opponent has counter magic, though. Yeah, kind of everything about this is brutal. We just don't have enough mana to do all the things that we want to do. Because basically, if we cast Jace and it gets countered, that is backbreaking. Uh, opponent gets to elk another food, attack Chandra, attack us, and then we're dead in two after that. <sighs> Better to cryptic. Cryptic gets countered, we're in the same boat, so I guess we just cast Jace. I don't know. This is all rough. Ice Fang, okay. Oh, come on. Brutal. <sighs> Alright, yeah, I think we probably lost this game then. A little unfortunate on the uh on the Veil of Summer. If I had kept a fires of invention, we might be in this. But yeah, as it stands, this is not looking good. Ugh. Yeah, this is just all bad. So I think the play here is uh, we have to hope that the opponent has absolutely no counter magic. Um, I think any singular counter spell wins the game. Uh, we need them to attack us for nine, right? Elka food, smack in for, for nine. And then at the opponent's end step, we're going to bounce Pithing Needle and draw a card. And then that'll give us Ren and Six to get lands back and start time warping. Um, we'll be at only three though, so that's pretty rough as far as life totals go. <laughs> the goose is now an elk. Yeah, if the opponent has any kind of counter magic, I think there's just no way for us to win because we never drew a land. So I think we're just going for... Hope they've got nothing. Oh, brutal. So if we bounce the Pithing Needle, they have enough mana now to cast it again. Let's see, how can we do this? I think this Thought Seize is the end. I'm going to Veil of Summer it anyway. Um, and then the next step is to next turn Cryptic Command tap the team so that they don't do 
uh, so that they don't kill us. But how greedy am I going to get? I think the answer is very. Yeah, we're almost certainly not winning if we just cryptic command and tap the team. So I think we need to try to draw land, try to make something happen. That's not it. Yeah, that's not it. All right, rough. Feel like that one was a winnable game. I uh, was really hoping that Veil of Summer would have gotten cast earlier, but oh well, four and one, not too bad. Okay, so we went four and one. We beat Titan Breach, we beat Humans, we beat Soltai Wurza, uh, we beat Artifact Prison, and then we lost to Soltai Wurza. So overall, the deck felt really good. Having Planeswalkers as the source of card advantage over something like Dictative Kruvix or Howling Mine meant that we also got to interact with the opponent, you know, elking that uh, Pithing Needle, or I guess it was a Sorcerer's Spyglass on our other Planeswalkers so that we can unlock them again, or, you know, killing creatures with Ren and Six or Chandra. The other thing that was really, really good with this deck is Ren and Six is built to be a powerful card, or rather, the mana base is really built to maximize how powerful Ren and Six is. There's 10 cards that are excellent to get with Ren and Six, the Nine Fetchlands and the Lonely Sandbar. And every time you do that, you can, you know, draw another card with Lonely Sandbar or Mystic Sanctuary a Time Warp back. And that very quickly leads to games where you can just ultimate Ren and win from there. Uh, there was that game where uh, I think we had one card in hand and we needed to draw Ren and Six, and then we did. And we were dead on board if we hadn't drawn Ren, but we did, and we got to get a whole bunch of lands, put a whole bunch of time warps back on top, and ultimately ultimate the Ren in six, and just take literally the rest of the turns for the rest of the game. One thing that I think is worth considering is adding even a fourth copy of Ren in six. Uh, it seems like casting an early Planeswalker and having it stick is really what you want to do with this deck. Uh, but one difficulty with that is making the mana work well, especially when you're trying to cast a red-green spell on turn two, while also putting three islands to play on into play by turn three. Um, so I'm not 100% sure if the mana would work out there, but it does seem like drawing Ren and Six consistently is what this deck wants to do. Over in the sideboard, these cards felt pretty reasonable. Uh, we didn't see a game where Surgical Extraction came into play, but I do actually think that Dredge is a pretty reasonably strong deck right now, so I think I would keep at least one copy of Surgical in the sideboard. Uh, the rest of the cards felt pretty good. Bonecrusher Giant we unfortunately didn't get to see in action all that much. Uh, Stomp did get to kill something, but we didn't actually get to do all that much with the Giant himself. Uh, I still think he's a reasonable inclusion, just given that He's a split card in a format as diverse as modern, so having you know varied threats or answers in your sideboard can be very powerful. Um, but I'm not a hundred percent sure that Bone Crusher Giant is great. But yeah, overall this deck was super fun and it was a blast to play, and I highly recommend giving it a spin if you can because it is super fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you for the next one.